like, like code language, but um, these, these symbols and the two-letter combinations is like how we internally refer to these licenses. So what I just showed you is that one, the Creative Commons by license, the, the by stands for attribution, and that's, as you can see, like the most, one of the most open licenses. So you have, all the way on top, you have works that are in the public domain, so where there's no copyright. That's obviously the most open. Those you can use without even having to attribute the user. Um, you, um, and then Creative Commons Zero is a special thing that's not really a license, that's something where you can donate something to the public domain. It doesn't work in all countries. In some countries you cannot just say, like, I don't want to be known as the creator because, like, you have these moral rights which, which you can't waive. We discussed that yesterday, like, that you can't sign away or that you at least have to specifically sign away not moral rights. Um, so, so that is something which is maybe in this context not so interesting, but then we have these two licenses, so we have one which also has share alike, which is a mechanism of saying basically, you have to give me attribution and if you make something new out of this, like you also have to share the new work under the same licensing conditions. So these are all open, so you can do things like share, remix, and you can use it for commercial purposes. Um, then we have in the middle, we have two, like the same licenses, basically, but there's an extra limitation on them, um, which says you can only do so for non-commercial purposes. We know that a lot of people are very happy to share material, say, like for private use or for educational use or for use by non-profit foundations, etc. It's good, but like I don't necessarily want other people to earn money with the work I share. So that is a, 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 a very popular choice somewhere in the middle. And then we have... Um, the licenses here, which either for commercial and non-commercial purposes, or for only commercial purposes, uh, only non-commercial purposes, say you can you can you can only share this material, but we don't want you to like don't modify it. This is often something which we see, for example, for filmmakers, for documentary makers, who are afraid of works getting taken out of context and their message distorted. Um, some photographers are surprisingly can, can surprisingly get worked up if you like cut like even two percent on the right side of their photo, like to make it fit on a, in, in an article in a newspaper. They go ballistic over that because they think like this this completely destroys the artistic sense of proportion in this thing, which is something that happens a lot. And I think this is also a very valid concern. So these are uh, basically things where you say, like, you can share this thing, like, I want you to pass this on to your friends, or you can even, like, use it in an advertisement, if, if it's a commercial thing, um, but please don't modify my work. Um, and then, below here, obviously, that's not, like, that's the standard situation that is copyright, right? And so Creative Commons set out to, to, to from this idea that the internet really, and that the internet and copyright aren't necessarily in sync in their standard thing, with the expectations of how people want to deal with works, um, they said, like, okay, we create something in the middle, which, um, which, which gives people more options of exercising their copyright, and does so in a good way, um, in, in, a, in a solid way. So it's not like just somebody's statement, oh, use it, but there's an actual license behind that, and these licenses are enforceable. We, for example, had... Um, very recently, um, uh, a case that was won in Italy that was published under um, this license. So it basically says you only have to give attribution. And somebody, somebody um, concerned a photo by, by a photographer which was uploaded to a, a platform. And then he found out that that was used by another entity um, for, uh, without giving attribution. So he didn't, he, he, and, and, and so he went to court in Italy and said, like, this violates this license because I shared that, but under the condition that I'm named as the creator and that it links back to my site. And he got damages on this, right? Like, he didn't say, he didn't say, like, this wasn't about, like, somebody else earned money or somebody else saved money by using my thing. That was pure and simple about this concept of attribution. And we've had not very many um, cases around the world, especially if you consider that there's one billion more than one billion Creative Commons licensed works out there. There's very, very few cases that we have, but so far, 
like we also like I mean it's it's our system which we promote, but so far like we've won the vast majority of these, or not we won, we are not a party to these cases, but generally like like we would consider this a win for us if our license con turns out to be enforceable and we would have thought like we would have lost if the court had said, Yeah, that Creative Commons license, you know, like it's an internet thing, it's not so important, like what do you what do you care? But in 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 a way like that gets recognized and that's actually um, that's actually something which is very important to us as well because this is not about us trying to um, undermine copyright. This is not about us trying to somehow seduce people to give away things that they should keep or to trick them into doing things. This is like really giving people more choice, like making respectful choices about how they want to share their material and do so in a proper way. So we are. Generally, Creative Commons, when it comes to the arts, to the creative sector of Creative Commons, just says, like, here's an option. Like, you can also, like, you can have full copyright, but you could also use one of our licenses. We are a little bit, as an organization, and that goes back to our, the mission that I showed at the moment, we are a little bit more normative in a number of other fields. That's not the, like, an individual creator should always be able to, to decide how, um, under which conditions like uh, uh, um, a work should circulate or not circulate. But if you look into areas like um, government, like especially things that are produced with public funds, think about educational materials, mm -hmm. think about um, academic research in many cases, um, and there's a number of other fields, but these are maybe government documents themselves. In some countries they are outside of copyright in the first place, in some countries they are copyrighted. Um, all of these things, so Creative Commons says, and like also, like we've got teams working on what we call these open policies, that, that materials that are produced with open money should be free, openly licensed, so that the public, which pays for it, also gets access back to that. And maybe the most important field there is what's called open educational resources, which is a, a worldwide movement of people producing um, educational resources, textbooks, or increasingly also uh, digital materials and uh, uh, content for digital learning systems, um, and make them available under open licenses so they, that they can, they can access by anyone, basically you don't have to pay for access to them, but also that they can modify. Like we know, and like educators know that sometimes Modify, like, like, I mean, the standardized content that you get in standard textbooks, like, is something like adjust that a little bit to the local context you're operating in, or the type of students that you have, like, can have very, very, very good results in actually them engaging more with the material. Also, other things, it enables, like, people, like the students themselves, engaging with this material in a much more profound way of modifying material, building their own stories out of this. So this is very powerful, and their Creative Commons says, like, like we go to governments, we also go to funders who fund educational projects, research funders, and we say, like, you should make that conditional on your funding of, uh, uh, like, you should apply the condition to uh, the grants that you make, that the materials that are produced with your grants are available on the open license. So, in a, in a, in a way, we've we've come, Creative Commons has come a little bit from an idea which was very much focused on a um, on, on individual creators, like it's also in this name, Creative Commons, and we've, we've ended up, we found ourselves in a position where we said, like also in terms of scaling up our activities, that it makes much more sense for us to focus on these larger organism, organizations like, like, like educational funders, educational institutions, governments, research funders, um, also um, universities um, to make their material, like to work with them to ensure that what can be made available publicly should be made available under conditions that everybody benefits. Like I think it's also to some degree, um, especially with research of course, uh, um, you're probably aware with the concept of open access publishing. Open access publishing uh, means like that the research doesn't end up in paywall journals which get incredibly expensive these days to have journals. Um, which, which, which ensures that that material, like that not only a small elite in privileged educational institutions has full access to like research, which almost always is funded by public resources, but that 
um, people across the world and in educational institutions rich and poor um, have the same access. And that is, that is actually one of the areas where we, we see almost a turning point, where we feel like that, that this is, like we can change the paradigm in a way. Like we're very close to that. It's a very, very profitable business for um, education, uh, for the, the academic publishers. Like they are among the most profitable companies in the world. Um, on the other hand, like we're seeing, and that's probably a sign that we are very close to winning that, that they have managed to establish business models where they make the same profit even if the result is free in the end. So they make, like they are switching from not letting like the users pay again and again and again. They have, many of them have switched for open access journals to business models where the, actually the, the academics, when they publish, pay a publishing fee, which sounds a little bit insane, but if, if you consider that like every academic like is for all of his publications dependent on so much more input from journals, like sources, etc., like it's actually a much more useful system like to pay once and then it's free for everyone, then do not pay a publication and charge every time um, somebody wants to access it. Um, so that is, um, that is veered a little bit up away from, from what I had on my slides. Um, so, so this gives you like an indication of like platforms that have Creative Commons integrated these days. It goes from very important ones, the Internet Archive, Flickr, uh, the Public Library of Science, which is a publisher of open access journals, Europeana, which we're going to talk about, obviously Wikipedia, a couple of other things. Like there's one, like we, we do this state of the commons report every year at the end. Last year we counted and you can, via search engines and we work together with Google for that, we tried to find how many Creative Commons licensed works there are on the internet and last year, at the end of last year, was the first time that we found more than one billion. Which is still like also not so much. Facebook at the moment gets more than one billion pictures uploaded by end users every day. Um, you can find out more about Creative Commons at Creative Commons website. Um, I can also go into more detail about like what concerns.